If possible, while the cover is on, align the laser beam first so that the beam is incident on the middle of the sensor area. You should already know the approximate power level of the light source you are characterizing. Make sure that only a few microwatts of optical power is incident on the CCD. Use the included neutral density filters to attenuate the beam. It's better not to see anything initially than having too much light and damage the sensor. We cannot possibly cover all the details in this video, so please refer to the user manual, which is immediately available in the software. The LBP2 series laser beam profiler employs the ribbon system, shown as the gray bar at the top, right below the menu structure. All of the controls are located here. As you click each menu, the ribbon updates with appropriate functions. The Tools button is always present in any ribbon. The Source ribbon displays information regarding the camera itself, such as the camera model, frame format, exposure, gain, black level, trigger, and capture. In addition, here you can find the important auto exposure and ultra cal functions. Auto setup is the auto exposure or auto X and the ultra cal function combined. First, we click on auto X to find the optimal exposure and gain level for the laser beam. After that, click on ultra cal. It is very important to establish the baseline calibration of the noise floor in order to make the most accurate laser beam with calculation. And the patented UltraCal procedure does exactly that. Upon completing the calibration, a green U will illuminate in the status bar. The UltraCal checkbox will turn on. A measure signal to noise ratio of the camera in RMS dB will be displayed. Beam display provides different display options for your view. The 2D and 3D profiles can be shown independently, as selected in the Tools button. If we double-click the Active tab, the window will become a floating window. Each window can be floating by hovering the window on a space while clicking the mouse and then release it, or docking by dragging the window back to anchor points, then resizing the window. It is a good idea to use an aperture to restrict the area where the analysis is performed. LBP2 can display three types of apertures, manual, auto, and the beam width aperture. The manual and auto aperture limit the region where data is analyzed and the results computed. The beam width indicates the size and approximate location and orientation of the computed beam width. Often it is useful to have both the apertures turned on. The capture ribbon provides many of the standard controls for managing the various ways that image, can, image data can be captured and processed. In the processing tool, you can do the frame averaging, frame summing, and apply the convolution algorithm. You can write a comment on the selected frames of data. Logging can be used to record computational results into ASCII data files onto the PC's hard drive. Logging performance is dependent upon the speed of the PC platform and on the type and number of results being logged. Reports consist of user-defined printouts or PDF files that can be created from the various display windows and results enabled in LBP2. The basic rule is that items are printed in a what-you-see-is-what-you-get style. Logging and reports are two great features for leaving the records of your measurement. Finally, the question mark with an arrow icon is called what's this. If we click on any feature within the application after clicking the what's this icon, we will be taken to the spot in the user guide that corresponds to that particular feature when the guide is already open. 
the LBP2 Laser Beam Profiler has a comprehensive toolset that allows the user an accurate characterization of the laser beam or any other optical source. Take your time to study the user manual to fully take advantage of all the features available to you.